So now we're back with the Cardio Q. Is this CoQ10 product, right? Yes, this is the CoQ10 product, and it's actually in the best form called ubiquinol. So it's very easily absorbable, and it's the form that's preferred in the body. CoQ10 as Cardio Q, it just really speaks to itself because the heart is the main place where CoQ10 is located. Whether it's Cardio Q, CoQ10, ubiquinol, these are all the same thing, which is energy for the heart and for the entire body. What else does it do other than energy for the heart? I heard it has a lot of benefits. CoQ10 is part of the mitochondria, and the mitochondria are inside of the cells, and that's where the energy is produced. So CoQ10 helps move food to become energy in the body. And if we have a lot of CoQ10, we can ramp up energy production, and we can help get rid of things like fatigue, like malaise, like constantly being tired like so many people are, but it's also good for muscle function, muscle recovery, for, for exercise, and of course for heart function because that is one of the main places where all that energy sits is in the heart because the heart is a very active organ, of course, right. you know, beating, uh, you know, a bill, over a billion times in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. We need to supply the heart with that kind of energy. They can afford to have a cramp or anything. No, definitely cannot <laughs> afford to have a heart cramp. That would not be good. Yeah. But you know, I test people's CoQ10 levels and so many people come back low, especially people that take statin pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. for cholesterol reduction. And statins are well known to reduce CoQ10. We wanna make sure that even if you are taking a statin drug, you take plenty of CoQ10 with mm -hmm. that 40% reduction on average in CoQ10 levels, and that's not good. That's because both CoQ10 and cholesterol is made in the liver, right? Exactly. They're made in the liver and they're made from food. And what happens is the statin drugs prevent the production of cholesterol, but also in that same avenue is they prevent the production mm -hmm. of CoQ10, along with some other mm -hmm. key ingredients. I think that anybody who's on statin drugs, certainly, a lot of other pharmaceuticals may interfere with CoQ10 levels. You can get tested, but you know what? There's no downside to taking CoQ10, mm -hmm. which is proven to help with inflammation, oxidative stress, is great for people with blood pressure issues, energy issues, you name it, CoQ10, and our product, CardioQ, can be helpful. Mm -hmm. If the person is not taking the statin drug, does that mean they don't have to take CoQ10 well, as a supplement? I still think that CoQ10 is a very healthy strategy for most people. If you're feeling fatigued, if you have low energy, if you've got problems with sleep, if you've got problems with depression, anxiety, and heart, or whatever it may be, I think CoQ10 can be helpful. And it's not just for the people that are on pharmaceuticals, because a lot of people, when we check their levels, their levels are low, because they're not giving the body the nutrients it needs to get the job done, and that's where supplementing with Cardio Q can be helpful. As we get older, the production reduces, right? And that's one of the reasons why? Unfortunately, as you know, Dr. Cho, as we get older, kind of everything over starts to, uh, you know, get worse. And, uh, and that's really where supplements, you know, can come in is that. And also, it's not even a matter of getting older. It's just a matter of we've been on this planet for so many years where, you know, we've been exposed to all of the pollution and all the bad nutrition and, and dangerous 21st century living. That's where supplements come in to help repair a lot of that damage. Mm -hmm. Definitely CoQ10 does that job of get rid of the toxins. Well, CoQ10 makes everything function better. So all of those pollutants, everything that we're exposed to, air pollution, environmental pollution, toxins and chemicals in the household, it all needs to be processed out of the body, and you can't process it without energy, and energy comes from cardio oh. Q. Because it moves stuff. It moves stuff mm. along. And those nice. tiny little fuel factories called mitochondria, mm -hmm. without cardio Q, CoQ10, they don't work. They don't work. Sounds very promising. Yes, yes. And there's a lot of literature on it as well. There are hundreds and hundreds of studies teaching about the benefits of taking CoQ10, CoQ10 supplements, and about the importance of CoQ10 in the body. Mm -hmm. And ubiquinone and the ubiquinone, does it really matter? Or is it like a tiny difference or like a huge gap? As we get older, it may be harder to make that conversion mm. of ubiquinone into ubiquinol. So why not just take the ubiquinol version and not have to worry about the conversion? And that's why I most see. authorities now 
and most companies are have moved towards for the ubiquinol, ubiquinol version. Yeah, it's nowadays more, it's hard to find the ubiquinol anymore. And it's it's more expensive to uh -huh. produce it, you know, this way. But clearly the value is there. So I do think there's a lot more benefits uh, to the ubiquinol. Now that being said, a lot of the early literature is on ubiquinone, and I think the results are even better with ubiquinol. I see. Perfect. Great. Thank you. You got it. Uh -huh.